Hello guys, I'm OCD Dubstub, and today we're not covering Redstone Tutorials, but instead we're going to cover the Minecraft 13W38C Snapshot, which was literally released today. And it will probably go up tomorrow, I think, or either today. I'm assuming I'll probably put it up tomorrow. Um, so... Uh, this is probably my third time trying to record today. I went through the entire reel of the game. I did everything. I went back to... I went back, went through, and edited. Apparently, I had no audio. My my headset was recording audio. But my render software did not pick up the audio. And then counted my headset as muted. So, um, I spent the majority of the day trying to refit this. So, this is probably... I'm probably about eight hours into recording now, so um, this time I've actually made sure everything's working. So let's just hop on in. So today, let me just click my F3 because this is what we need to be in. You're probably noticing all these funky freaking trees. That's because we're in a new biome called the savanna. And the way the savanna works is it has the texture of the desert grass and has a new type of jungle tree. It's basically a savanna tree, if anyone's actually been to the savanna, which the savanna sucks because it's extremely hot. Um, so it's got oak leaves and jungle wood. Um, this is actually a naturally spawning. You can't get it any other way. It doesn't come in a sapling. It doesn't come in jungle. It doesn't come in oak. It, it's not a sapling. It's just here. So, um, Along with that, we have many other biomes. We have the Plains Biome, which now has two, two blocks of grass, I believe. Yes, two blocks. Um, we have a whole bunch of new flowers. Poppies, dandelions, oxycottons. Oxycottons are drugs, never mind. Those are oxydaisies. There we go. Not oxycottons. Um, yeah. Along with that, there is a new reed texture otherwise known as sugarcane. As you can tell, it's greenish now, which looks more like bamboo, but um, that's actually true because the new by the um, actually sugarcane does look like bamboo in a sense. Um, along with this, there is a new fishing engine, which has two sets to it. There are four fish in total now. And there are random treasure items. These treasure items are pretty cool. There's, um, you can have any chance from getting an enchanted book to a freaking wooden shovel. And that you can get, you can get diamonds or something. It's a rare chance, though. Um, um, there's also a few new biomes. There's a redwood biome, which is just ginormous redwood trees. Sadly, I don't have one around here. And I don't really feel like searching for them. Oh, ooh, village, village, village. Yes. Cool. Um, there are new... In these biomes, there's like... Ooh, I'm um, just going to wear this. Did I just deleted it, sad face. Um, in this biome, there are ginormous trees that let mushrooms grow. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, there are gravel biomes, which are literally just biomes full of gravel. There are... squids. Lots of squids. Um, there are a new biome that is... A t the tundra biome's different now. It's got a new coating. And there's no longer snow in the tundra biome. Um, the tundra biome's dry, because the tundra biome is actually dry. There's no snow in a tundra biome. And the trees are changed differently. Along with this update, there's a new coating. So, um, that helps with the environments. Like, you remember when you used to get the... You would get, um... How do I explain this? You get, like, a snow biome right next to a desert biome. And that just didn't make sense. The coating's actually a lot more in-depth now. And I would go with... I could maybe make a tutorial on that later. Um... The coating is a lot more in-depth, so now you won't have things like a desert biome spawning next to a snow biome. So that's a lot more realistic engine. 
Um, along with this update, they worked with a lot of new kind of cavish things. You don't notice them too much. Um, there's newer... They've actually added a river biome in now. Well, it's not really... It's always kind of been here. It just hasn't been coded as well. Um, so rivers are a lot more distinct now. Um, there are... I think it's that... Yep, here we go. There are these newer patched areas, which are just like ores and just like big stone messes. And it kind of looks ugly, but it's kind of cool. Um, lots of mobs. They, that's another thing they did. They helped with um, random mob generation now. So, um, I've probably... I, okay, I'm going to stop blabbing, and we're going to move over to my Flatlands world, and I will talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, here I am. I'm in my Flatlands and stuff. I just ruined part of my video there, then. Um, okay, so let's start with the new blocks, um, flowers, fish, and so forth. Humpity dumpity dee dump. Ah, just making sure. Um, okay. So, first we have the plot, the puzzle, which is a new grass. I believe it's from savannas and a swamp. I don't remember exactly. Um... So this is a newer grass block, so now I think we're up to grass itself. And I think we're up to mycelium also. So now there's actually three types of blocks. of. So that's kind of cool. It's nice to have more than just the two grasses. So, yeah. Okay. So next we have dandelions, poppies, blue orchids, alumium, Red tulips, orange tulips, white tulips, pink tulips, and oxy daisies. Cool thing about these is they can actually be used as dyes. So, dyes are a little bit easier to obtain now, but at the same time, they're still a little bit annoying. A few of them actually have, like, the same dye pattern. I think this one, oh, yeah, that one's, like, gray get paint. So a lot of the a lot of the dyes that were a little bit pain to get before are, are a lot easier now. Um they removed the rose bush and or they removed the rose plant that was one tall and now there's a rose bush. The rose bush the still yields the same amount. Um the lilac's gone. I don't know where the lilac is. Oh, forgot one. Yeah, I forgot that one. Um, okay. Azure Bluette. Um, there's actually a few I forgot. Here it is. Lilacs. I like lilacs. Um, the, these are the double grass. These are large ferns, and these are, um, pianos. Another one that didn't show up in my menu I forgot about was, I just now remembered it, was sunflowers. Sunflowers! It's actually a two-block. So, those are pretty. Kind of. Not really. Um, along with that, we have the fishes. Um, there's four types of fish now. There's just regular fish, there's salmon, there's clownfish, and puffer fish. Although there's still only two cooked fishes. There's regular cooked fish, and there's cooked salmon. So, um, over here we have maps. This one actually disappeared. There it is. Updated. There we go. Um, the way maps work now is you can put them on an item frame and it covers the entire block. I know a lot of people complained about that in the past, but now you can make connective maps if you want to. So, that's kind of cool. Um, enchantments. There's two new enchantments to the game. There is Lore 3, which, gives, which is a fishing enchantment. Lore 3 gives you a higher bite chance, and there is, um, Luck of the Sea, which gives you a, um, higher treasure chance. So, yeah. Um, okay. So now we're gonna move on to the, um, new commands and command block codes and blah blah blah. Um, so we have the standard command block with the previous outputs and stuff now. This is a newer, newer menu layout. So, those are all fun. I'm just going to delete that. Um, along with that, there is two new things. There is a new um, 
give command and there is a new set command. The new give command works such as give Matthew 981. Instead of having to say um, 357, that's just the top, no, one, stone, one, I get one stone. Um, now we can go back and we can do Minecraft semicolon stone and it gives me one stone. This is a new way that you can actually work and not have such a pain in the game, not having to remember all those pes pesky IDs. Along with that, there is a new set block command, which comes in three sets, keep, destroy, and replace. Keep places a block. I got 54 stones set in this block. 54 again. Um, destroy, destroys a block. And replace, replaces a block. Um, the way this new coding string works is set block, I have it set to put one block above. I put in the new Minecraft ID, Minecraft chest, zero is your standard ID code, so you keep that for your original block. Keep, which is the place command. And then we have item, and then bracketed ID, one, which is stone, count, 54, and then close the bracket section, and we get that. Um, replace or destroy is the same, just it's destroy instead of keep, and it gets rid of the block and replace, replaces the entire block, deletes it, and replaces the item rapidly. Um, then we're going to move on to the new chat command spec code. So hit, hit the button, and it says, do you want a cookie? Heck yes. If I just hover over it, it says yes please, and you click it, and it gives you a cookie. Another cool thing that's now is you see where it says stone and stuff, it hover over it and it tells you the item itself. So I can do that. And this is actually, since they removed the 250 block code limit, which was the amount of characters you could put in a command block console, um, it's kind of gotten a little bit hectic. So there's a new command called telrar, or telra, and it's a, it's a multi-code line. So the way this works is it puts in an original text, which would be, do you want a cookie? And it adds an extra text code, which is the heck yes. And the way this works is I put it a color syntax, a, and I name it blue, and I activate it as what's called a click event. And the way a click event works is it, as you click the item, which is heck yes, it activates an action code. The action code is, run, is a run command, and I give it a value term. And the way a value term is something such as give. And I have it set as give at person 357, which is the cookie ID. Now with the stone, when you like hover over stone and it says stone, you have what's called a hover event. And the way hover event works is it works the same. It's an action text, except for you don't click, it's hover. And it shows a text value. The value is yes please and then we close the bracket and just do this one more time and there you go and now if we wanted to edit this we could come back to the very beginning and see here we have heck yes I'm going to change it to may I please sir and we'll change the yes please to pretty please. And we hit it again. And we, it says that. Um, one more thing we can do is we could change the color. And what we come back is we come to the value code color right here. And let's change it to purple. That is not a valid ID code, apparently. Or I just did something wrong. Which I probably just did something wrong. Um, yes, I did. We'll just change it to green. Green seems more legit. There we go. And we click on it, and we get a cookie still. So, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, over here we have a, um, the new test for command. 
Now this isn't test for as in it tests the scoreboard, it's a test for block command. And the way this works is it tests for an item that's three blocks above it, or I have it set for three blocks. And it's testing for a block item iron. Now the way this works is it tests for an iron block. As you place the iron block, um, you get this string. My example for this was um, it was race for the wool basically. Um, as you place, say you place the red wool, um, it would tell everyone that whoever has placed the red wool. And since Matthew Knight one replaced red wool, his team would be in the lead. And this works pretty cool because now you have this would work really good for Voice for the Wool or many objective type games. Um, sorry guys. Um, here we have something that's really cool now. Um, a lot of you know um, like custom maps that give like custom items. Um, that originally used to be done, done in a program called NBT Edit or you file scripted your character codes. Most common was NBT Edit, but now we get custom items. And it's called a blood vein, and it says Death of Blood. See, it used to be um, you couldn't do that. Now you can put completely, um, completely different. Like, you can basically edit anything you want in. And this saves you all that time and extra resource programs. So basically it works the same way, it's a give command, you do your Minecraft ID, Iron Sword, I could change this to Diamond if I wanted. Sword, um, we want one, zero duplicates, display, and then the tag is a name, the name is Blood Vein, and then we have lore, the description, Death of Blood. Now if we hit this again, I get a Diamond Sword called Blood Vein. So that's cool. Um, so, this allows you to have basically a whole new dimension of gameplay now, without all those extra files and all that fun stuff. So, let's move over to the next thing. This has to do with the new achievement menu. Um, train. <laughs> um, you see that there's no longer these blinking arrows, but kind of more of these. And, um, so... Overkill, don't mind that, just survival. Um, so let's punch a block. Oh, crap, I haven't actually... Um, here. Bench making. Or, yeah, marking. Um, now you see that it says that I have actually made something. You can hover over it and it tells you that it's an achievement and it's crafting a workbench with four blocks of planks. So, that basically announces it to the entire server, so that's going to be something that most servers are going to disable, because it's a bit annoying. Um, along with the update, there's something new. Um, let's just go back into game mode one. Um, bigger portals. And this is kind of cool, because now you're allowed to have basically, the smallest you can do is the standard portal, but you can get up to 23 by 23 or you can even do squares or something fun. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, now if you really wanted to, you could push a gas through. And actually, um, yeah, let's go, let's go push a gas through. I, I want to spawn a gas. So, downloading terrain. Hmm, taking a while. Oh, there we go. Oh, pushed the bat through. Well, this portal's just not gonna do it. Apparently my frame rate's dropping rapidly. Okay, flint and steel. And let's just spot guest. Oh, there we go. Did that work? It did not. Okay, try this again. There we go. Now we got sucked up. So let's go back to the main world, and we have a ghast in the real world. Just what we need, right? So that's that's lots of fun. So we have let's let's call him 
Let's call him Gasteria or something like that. Sounds retarded. Um, yeah. Okay. So that covers all the aesthetic bases and item bases of the game and stuff. So, um, I will be back in a few minutes with, well, for you a few seconds. I'll be back with the super secret setting menu. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm back. Um, so, now that we've gone over everything, let's go into the new setting proportions of the game. So we have options, and um, first one of the first few things you're going to notice is music and sound, and super secret settings. So let's start off with music and sound. Um, there's a new master volume control, which allows you to either completely mute the game, have it high as you want, or you can custom set what you want. You want music louder, you want music completely off. You want you want to have only 20% rain. You want to hear enemy monsters, but not friendly monsters such as sheep, um, want to be able to hear a player behind you, or you just don't care. Um, you can turn on a jukebox, or you can shut a jukebox off when one of your friends start playing an annoying record, like, wait. Um, so, blocks an environment. If you can hear yourself running, you can't really hear me running if I have my master volume on, can you? There you go. Along with that, there's a new particle effect, if I can get it. No, I can't get it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, next, we'll go to video settings. With the video settings, there's a few new ones called um, the render distance change to chunks. Instead of a certain thing, it goes up to 16 chunks. Or as low as 2 chunks. I keep mine about 6. Um, now you can have an actual frame rate meter. You can go from 10 to unlimited. I don't see why you wouldn't keep it at unlimited anyways. But if you really want to put your frame rate at like 40 or 10. Um, yeah. Everything else basically stays the same. Um, my mini map, or mini map, mip map and anastropical filtering. The way this works is I'll just turn these on, let the world regenerate itself, and you probably don't notice it all that much, but they're smoothing now. Um, when you look at the portals and stuff, you kind of see that the edges are kind of smoother now. The tree kind of looks, as you get further out, it kind of smooths itself out, and all the stuff does. Um, the way this astronomical does is... It basically smooths the edges of items for a higher quality, so to say. So, that's not all that I'm using. So, I'm just going to turn these back down because I don't really need them. Um, language obviously hasn't changed. Resource has, though. Um, the way resource works now is you can have multiple selected resource packs. Default's always going to be selected for items that um, don't have a texture in your normal pack. But, I can put in specs, and I could load specs, and all the non-textured items would stay default. So, now that works, I could have all my packs selected, not advised though, just saying. So, so now that we're done with that, snooper settings haven't changed, multiplayers haven't changed, controls really hasn't changed. So, now the moment that you are all been waiting for, that super secret settings. So, what are they? Let's find out. What was that? Whoa, what just happened? Okay, so, the gist of the super secret settings is... Filters. <laughs> and that's not even a joke. It's filters, all the way. This one apparently locks your frame rate. This one's actually my favorite one. Um, this one kind of reminds me of Borderlands. With all these, like, bumped out textures and stuff. This is actually the filter I'm going to be using a lot. So, this one's actually really cool. Um, there, for some reason, there's all these weird, creepy sounds now when you do that. It's just, I don't know. This one's our blur effect. Um, 
there we go. This one's like a black and white pencil drawing. As you can see, it's kind of all penciled. This one is a... This one basically smooths and glows. Kind of to give it that extra glowy effect. This one's kind of like a um, film reel. Upside down. I don't have to explain that one. Negative film wheel. I just disconnected. Amazing. Okay. Um. This is like an RTV camera monitor. We have another one of those kind of Borderlandish theme. We have. Oh, it's this one. This one's like a Hero Brian stuff going on. It's a little bit annoying. And our RTV camera. Um, this one's really cool. This one's like a neonish colorish one. As you can tell, it's kind of like glistening and glowing, and I like it. Place to win. Look out with that one. Um, yeah. Oh, don't want to do that. Um, so. It's weird. Um, we have like an 8 bit, like, freaking. I don't know. This one's like a black and white negative sh color thing, but you still have some color as you can see. Um, black and white 8 bit. <laughs> um, this one's just blur. Up, oh, this one's the really trippy one. This one's the one that makes you feel like you're high. <laughs> but um, but um, bum. Um, this one is actually like a bold effect. It basically bulges everything in a 3D effect-ish. Um, makes some lines a little bit thicker, such as like the crafting bench and the chest has a really freaking thick one. Um, this one's a, this one's just basically a blur filter. And, okay. That's it. So, okay guys, well, I am tired of recording for the day, I am sorry, since I've probably been up to eight hours of recording now, so, um, I am OCD Dubstep, and I thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I really hope you tune in next time. Um, if you liked this video, well, like it, subscribe please. If you didn't like it, I guess just like it and subscribe. Because, I mean, what's the point? It'd be nice. <laughs> okay, guys, so I will talk to you next time, and thank you so much for watching.